Please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Who moves to Arkansas on purpose? <laughs> this crazy black lady does. <laughs> Let me give you some context. I've been a parent since before I was 17, barely 17, and being a parent has been a defining part of my identity for most of my life. It just so happens that both of my kids met, hit pivotal points in their lives at the same time. My daughter, she graduated college with honors, hey now. <laughs> My son graduated college and went on to Yale, hey now, <laughs> both in the same year, and I was left with an empty nest. Both my kids, being in the awesomeness that they are, said, Mom, go out, do your own thing, don't worry anything about us. And then at that same time, I got this awesome job, off job offer for a position in a Fortune 100 company in El Dorado, Arkansas. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so being a big city East Coast girl, moving to a small town in the Deep South didn't deter me at all. In fact, I was intrigued. I pictured myself with these Southern belles who baked delectable apple pies and finger looking fried chicken. I pictured hoedowns instead of clubs, a smaller scale of life and a slower pace where everyone knew your name and all your business. So are you all laughing at my naivete? You should be, because El Dorado, Arkansas was not Mayberry. I realized this the first time when I went out to my first day of work, when I went out with my coworkers, my female coworkers, they all took me out to lunch, and they all were amazed that I didn't own a firearm. Then they went on to describe to me their firearms. It was the little pink Beretta to the Colt 45, which knocks her on her ass, but she loves it anyway. <laughs> I realized it when I saw my first five-foot Confederate flag waving proudly in the back of a pickup truck. The first of many, I might add, because that's a thing there. In fact, I think they must have contests to see who can mount the biggest flag on the back of their pickups. Flags, which by the way, can be purchased at the roadside Confederate flag stand. That's a thing too. <laughs> Mind you, I wasn't, didn't give up. I was determined to find that small town that I was looking for that you heard about in the country songs and that you heard about on TV. But the first phase of my disillusionment came the week before the office Christmas party. Now, I've been having a conversation with a coworker who was white, and she was a pleasant lady, and we had shared many conversations before. We'd share stories about our kids, stories about TV shows that we liked, coworkers we didn't. We also shared, a couple of coworkers joined our conversation. And then she related to us the story of something that had happened to her in the supermarket of a parking lot. So apparently she got into a disagreement with a black lady. And then this black lady must have cussed her out something awful because she said she had never been so offended in all of her life. Now, she said also went on to say that it was her own fault. It was her own fault because she went to the supermarket on the wrong side of town. Of course I questioned her. Wrong side of town? What's the wrong side of town? You know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Oblivious to the disdain that is rolling off of me, and you could see discomfort from the other white co-workers who were in this conversation with us, she went on to say, well, over there, they're not like the ones over here. Over there, they're articulate and well-dressed and have good job, jobs. And then I stop her and say, you do know I'm black. <laughs> and then she realizes her mistake and tries to retract it and just digs herself deeper. And then the coworker says, no, she doesn't really mean that. She doesn't mean it the way it sounds. Now, let me tell you all, I think all black people have an inner Malcolm and an inner Martin. The inner Malcolm, inner Martin responds in the turny of the cheek manner. The inner Malcolm responds like the black lady in the supermarket parking lot. <laughs> it took everything in me to find my inner Martin and not let the inner Malcolm out. Now, as word of the Good Ones incident got around the office, everyone was trying to be extra nice to me. And at the office Christmas party, people were clamoring for me to sit at their table. Mind you, I was not that popular before, but it was as if sitting at their table would mean that I'm not racist, I'm sitting there with you. 
But despite all this, we were all having a good time and enjoying the evening, so much so that they didn't want it to end. And someone suggested, hey, let's go to the local bar in town. Of course, I'm like, yeah, I'll go. And then as I went to a coworker to ask, what's the address of the par bar? His mouth dropped open, he got red, his eyes got big, and the only word he knew was um. Didn't know what to say, well, so he just gave me the address and got away quickly. So I'm confused, I'm puzzled, because the atmosphere in the room was changed. Whereas before, no one could stop themselves from talking to me, now no one would meet my eye. Finally, a good friend, or who, well, a good friend of mine pulled me to the side and said, I don't think you wanna go here. And I'm like, why not? She said, it's a little rough. I'm from Philly, I can handle rough. <laughs> she says, no, no. She said, they have a big old Confederate flag on the door, there's inappropriate signs on the walls, and I don't think the people are gonna be that friendly towards you. <sighs> now I sigh, and I'm sad, and as I'm looking around the room at all my friends who are going, and I'm looking at my friend in front of me who said she was going, and then I ask her the question, I said, thank you for telling me, I'm glad you didn't let me walk into a situation like that, but tell me, why are you going? To which she sighed, shrugged, and said, it's the only place in town to go. My disillusionment was now complete. The story is now, who moves out of Arkansas on purpose? <laughs> this saner black lady, if a little sadder.